Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. A couple weeks ago, I uploaded a video explaining how to install an auto bed leveling sensor on the Monoprice MakerSelect V2 using an Arduino Uno as the interface between the sensor and the Z end stop switch. Since uploading that video, I've gotten a few messages from some of you having a hard time getting that method to work as expected for one reason or another. The biggest issue, however, seems to be with the reliability of the sensor that I suggested in the video description. The inductive sensor I recommended is a 6 volt to 36 volt NPN sensor that has about a 4 millimeter detection distance. That means the sensor requires a minimum of 6 volts to power it up before it will be able to sense anything. The Arduino Uno I showed in the video outputs a maximum of 5 volts. I know you're thinking, why would you suggest trying to run a 6 volt sensor with only 5 volts? And I had a good reason. I bought two of the exact same sensor that I recommended in my video to experiment with, and both of them not only work with 5 volts, but they seem to prefer 5 volts as running either of them with 9 volts feels like way too much power. When it's running on 9 volts, you can see the light stays on 100% of the time, and only gets slightly brighter when the sensor is actually triggered. So I felt like since the two of mine both worked fine, it was a safe assumption that they would work the same for everybody else, but that seems to not be the case. In this video, I'll be explaining a different process that you can go by to set up auto bed leveling using all of the same parts plus a few extras. Except you won't need the Arduino Uno after you're done burning the bootloader. This method will require a 10k resistor and a 15k resistor to make what's known as a voltage divider circuit. I assure you it's not as scary as it sounds. You can get a pack of resistors on Amazon for pretty cheap and you'll most likely want a soldering iron to solder the wires and resistors together. And for the sake of tidiness, you'll probably want to get some heat shrink tubing, but that's optional. The purpose of the voltage divider circuit is fairly simple. When you power the sensor with 6 volts, the output signal from the signal wire is 6 volts. If you power the sensor with 12 volts, the output will be 12 volts. It's just passing through the current that you're passing into the sensor. The problem is, the Melty board on the Maker Select, and pretty much any 3D printer mainboard, is only made to handle certain voltages. That means you can't just go passing 12 volts into the Z-axis end stop on your Melty board without most likely frying the board altogether. If you take a multimeter and connect it to the two wires coming out of your Z-axis end stop on your printer, you'll see the end stop is constantly pushing about 5 volts from one wire to the other. That means that's really your goal, to get about 5 volts into the signal pin of your end stop whenever the sensor is not activated, and to cut off that 5 volts when it's the other way around. The voltage divider circuit lets you power your sensor with 12 volts straight from your power supply, and then outputs a voltage of about 4.8 volts that you can use as the signal to tell your end stop pin when the sensor is triggered or not. So effectively, it steps down the output voltage to one that your printer can actually use while still supplying enough power to make your sensor work. Here's a diagram that shows how the end stop switch works on the printer by default. And here's what we're trying to accomplish with the auto bed leveling sensor. We're basically replacing the 5 volt signal coming from the negative pin on the end stop switch with the 5 volt signal coming from the sensor instead. Before we get started, let me give out a disclaimer. Proceed at your own risk. If you're not somewhat comfortable with the idea of connecting new wires to your power supply or soldering in general, you may want to get acquainted with those concepts before attempting this. If you're still on board, here's what you're going to need. First, if you haven't already watched my video explaining how to install an auto bed leveling sensor with the Arduino Uno, you'll probably want to go watch that first since I won't be covering all of that information again here. Second, you'll need a 10K resistor and a 15K resistor. You're probably better off just buying a pack of them so that just in case you mess up you'll have some backups. Also, you're going to need a long enough length of three different colored wires to reach from inside your control box to the end of your sensor cable preferably inside the existing wire wrap for the sake of tidiness, and you'll need another shorter piece of wire to reach from your new circuit to the melty board. You're going to need a soldering iron and optionally some heat shrink tubing. Also, it would be a good idea to have a multimeter available to test voltages with to make sure your wiring is right before making any permanent connections to your printer. First, connect one end of your new wires to the three wires coming off of your sensor. And if the new wires are a different color, or not one that you would remember offhand, you may want to write down a conversion table on a piece of paper to refer back to while you're wiring up inside of the control box. 
You'll want to completely unplug your printer from the wall and unplug the power cable from the printer itself to be 100% sure you don't accidentally end up shocking yourself. Open up your printer and route the new wires from your sensor into the control box through the wrapped bundle of wires that are already coming out of your printer. At this point, you can go ahead and connect the positive wire coming from the brown wire on your sensor to one of the plus V terminals on your power supply. The voltage divider circuit only involves the signal wire and the ground wire. If all of the terminals on your power supply have something attached to them, it's okay. You can just attach the wires to whichever terminal has enough space. Before you get started on the voltage divider circuit, if you're going to be using heat shrink tubing, you'll want to slide some down onto the ground wire or blue wire from the sensor just long enough to cover one side of the resistor, and a piece in the signal wire or black wire from the sensor. Next, you'll want to take the 15K resistor and connect it to the black signal wire from your sensor. Then connect the other end of that resistor to one end of the 10K resistor. After that, you'll want to connect the other end of the 10K resistor to the end of the blue negative wire from your sensor. Now you can slide the heat shrink tubing from the blue negative wire onto the 10K resistor so that you're covering everything except where the two resistors are twisted together and where the resistor is twisted to the wire. Connect the twisted negative wire and one end of the 10K resistor to one of the COM or negative terminals on your power supply. You can solder these two together after you've verified everything works if you want to, but that's optional since the terminal should hold them tightly enough. Now you're going to connect the shorter length of wire I mentioned earlier to the middle of where the two resistors are attached together, and that wire is going to be your new signal wire. Here's a diagram of the way all of these wires should be connected at this point. If you have a multimeter, now would be a good time to test this out. You should cover all the bare wires of your circuit as best you can to make sure none of them touch one another or anything else. Now very carefully, with all hands out of the way and no wires touching one another, plug the power cable into your printer and switch it on. You should be able to test the voltage between one of the negative terminals on your power supply and the end of your new signal wire. When the sensor isn't activated, it should be showing between 4 and 5 volts. When the sensor is activated, it should be showing 0 volts. If all of that checks out, power off and completely unplug your printer from the wall. If you don't have a multimeter to test with, be very, very sure that you have the 10K and 15K resistors in the right location, because if they're hooked up backwards, your voltage divider will be putting out about 7.2 volts. This may be fine, but as I said, your main board is made to handle about 5 volts at most, so this could be way too much and may damage your multi board. After you've verified that the voltage divider is working as expected and you've completely unplugged your printer, you'll need to attach the new signal wire from your voltage divider circuit to the positive pin of the Z-axis end stop plug on your multi board. You can use a single pin DuPont connector if you have one, or you can splice in the female half of a jumper wire to connect to the pin. Or if you have some JST connectors, you can put the signal wire into one half of a two-pin JST connector for a more professional look. You don't need to plug anything into the negative pin because the sensor is already attached to the same negative terminal that's powering your multi board. After you're done hooking everything up, you may want to test your sensor again while your control box is still open. Just be careful again plugging the power cable in not to electrocute yourself. If you have the firmware installed from my last video, your sensor should work correctly now without any need for an Arduino. Now that you've verified that it works as expected, you'll want to turn off your printer and unplug it, then go back and solder together all of the wires and shrink the heat shrink tubing over all of the solder joints and both of your resistors to avoid any shorts after you close the control box.
You can do your own wire routing and cleanup, but make sure you leave enough slack in the wires to work with in case you need to open the control box again later. Anyway, that's about it. I covered the rest of the setup in my last video, so make sure you set up the Z-axis offset correctly and enjoy not having to manually level your bed anymore. I do need to give another shout out to Peter Grace for pointing out that this is an option. He commented on my nano bed leveling video asking why I was using an Arduino when it could be done much simpler, so I asked him to make a video showing how to do it, and he did. I'll leave a link to his video in the description below in case you guys want to check it out. I think this is a pretty great option if you're comfortable with soldering and wiring, but I figure if you're not at least okay with the idea, you probably wouldn't be trying to install auto bed leveling on your printer anyway. In my opinion, the Arduino solution was a great idea since it's simple enough to be done without soldering, and you really need a way to burn a bootloader to this printer anyway, but it would be nice if the sensors were at least reliable. Anyway, feel free to click the like or subscribe button if this video is at all helpful to you, it really helps my channel a lot. If you or anyone you know is looking to buy a new 3D printer, consider checking out my GearBest affiliate links in the video description below. Or if there's anything else you're looking to buy from them, let me know and I can check to see if there are any active coupon codes for it to maybe save you guys a few bucks. But I hope you're having a great day, and as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.